Hey guys, and uh, yesterday I had the AOR tier 4 race at uh, Mount Panorama last uh, night, and uh, we had an eventful race, I would say. Uh, definitely in the back foot, uh, after a certain incident that you can see here. Uh, we definitely, based on the pace I had, uh, I think a good result was definitely on the cards here. But without further ado, let's uh, go into the race review. So now at the start, uh, I'm not that good at battles really. I'm generally struggled with keeping it on track, especially hitting the walls quite a lot. But here we go. We are at the start right now. And now uh, we take it conservative in turn one. We can see that the Astrid does uh, sweep past us. The outside of turn one, uh, we are on the back foot. Uh, but relatively clean start all around, all around. Now over here. We have to focus on the new Ferrari behind me. Because so I'm about to perform the perfect execution of the Ferrari master plan. I get hit there and of course so now I have to wait for the entire field to pass. Uh, you can see I have significant uh, diffuser damage uh, which does really like hamper me around here. And uh, the car felt fine for the first few corners. Uh, I really did think we were going to make it with this damage, but then uh, going up the hill uh, at over here, I discovered that I basically don't have any rear stability. Uh, I was already running quite roving and having damage to my diffuser further aggravated that issue, and as a consequence, I now had to back out. Now, we do go there. Uh, we kept going on, uh, and then in lap 4, uh, we pick up another damage over here. It all comes back from that original damage basically. You lose stability and your car just started behaving. As you can see, we got completely locked up over there and I hit the wall. And this time, the damage was significant. I could not afford to not box anymore right now. So, uh, as a result, we head back into the pits and we come out. And we decided to now like basically push flat out. And uh, in fact, uh, the leaders of the race, uh, St. Saint, uh, Saint Hughes, is actually not that far away from me really so um, uh, a lot of things going on in my mind or whether or not like if I, if they do catch me and if i don't have the pace i was really worried that i was gonna like really lose out because it was more time because my, my best hope here is an undercut and in total i lost 30 seconds so i really did not know what to expect of the race ahead but even then i kept pushing flat out as you can see in the up section like like i have never pushed so much in any race uh, in, in fact, uh, I got so close to the walls, I actually had very little margin for error generally. Like, as you can see over here, like, I think I could get very close to the wall there. Right here. And we kept pl pushing flat out. Uh, at this point, I actually had the fast lap of the race, 139. I, I was, I think, overall 5 to 6 tenths faster and definitely had more conditions than, than the leader. So I think if I did start where I qualified, did not get taken out, uh, I definitely would have been able to fight for the win, uh, that's for sure. We do fight, uh, but at this point, uh, right now, I don't know, I, I, I can't see I'm fighting, but uh, I do know that I'm fighting with the Aston ahead of me, uh, who is, uh, but of course, at this point, I am still trying to get an idea of the field. Uh, my, my hope is that a lot of people do stay out because rain was forecast and you can only see to half an hour in the forecast so my expectation was that a majority of people would opt to stay out until uh, the very end and probably fit but uh, unfortunately that's not, that's not what happened so uh, we didn't really have an option to overcut although we had better pace and 30 seconds is a lot of time to cover back but uh, still we do like uh, make it make it pass so let's see now uh, let's go to the fun battles we had on the day yeah, and uh, yeah, as you can see, we do eventually catch up to the cars ahead, and let's have a look what we can do. Uh, the Ferrari is not a very good car in terms of following, like, uh, it does suffer from a bit of uh, what we call as dirty air. Uh, you get a bit torn, and the car becomes snappy. Uh, but it's not as bad as you would have in the form of, or even when you compare it to real life. and. Because of that, like we really have a lot of issues. But even then, like staying close to your car was a problem. Like I did have to adjust my lines, offset my lines a little bit to uh, work out the strategy, to work out what's the best thing I to take. And now, as you can see, we have caught up with this move, and at this point, my move is okay. This is the four positions that are right in front of me for the taking. That was of course, that was of course my goal over here. Uh, 
but uh, everyone is considered they weren't really making mistakes and in battle it's quite difficult to make uh, overtake unless the guard ahead makes mistakes or you have much significant straight line speed into the final uh, on the final straight uh, i did have that advantage but uh, it just never was enough to really get the move done there is a car ahead which has a tiny bit of damage uh, but even uh, just ever, uh, I think it had a little more than a tiny bit of damage, but still, they didn't have the pace on the straights to keep everyone behind. Yep. As you can see, the Ferrari ahead of me uh, does get a bad exit there. Uh, I decide to try to go around this outside here, try, try to do the move, but uh, he gets in the curve a tiny bit, he gets a bit of boost here, and uh, he nearly swipes me off. But uh, thankfully, we don't not get much damage there, and uh, we can fight with it. As you can see, me flashing my uh, flashing my headlights in anger. Uh, again, similar as we were just too far ahead, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and we make probably one of the first mistakes in the whole race. Uh, which is over here, uh, we basically uh, lock up on the mark, on the uh, rears a tiny bit, uh, get a bit of a sideways movement, and, but uh, no harm done, uh, still pretty good to go. Uh, yeah. Now, lap number two is where things really start kicking up, as you can see the red Ferrari ahead of us does make a mistake, and this, uh, I tried to go around the outside, but I did not know that the car would be so slippery over the marbles, and I literally skipped straight into the wall. Thankfully, there's not a uh, big, it was not a, a very high speed, so uh, we came out with a little damage. But uh, of course, that would have been a lot more nasty, as it's very common for the car to completely pirouette on those marbles. Uh, but I, uh, I could immediately see that the Ferrari ahead of me definitely did not have the same pace as I had. and. So that because I was now planning to set up the move to the final corner, uh, as you can see now, slip streaming behind him. Uh, I was not even that close, but I think he had a bit of damage, but I can't see anything visibly on the replay. But I definitely have more straight line speed as I'm able to comfortably uh, slip stream past him and get uh, actually ahead of him by the breaking point. And, uh, but he does try a very ambitious uh, dive bomb with the inside, but uh, I knew that was coming and immediately covered it off and had prepared the undercut. Uh, and e even if he had uh, broke lead and made the corner, I'm pretty sure I would have gotten him uh, into the final corner of the circuit. Because, uh, uh, once again, we're following this train, and again, my position, I, I have a potential of P16 over here if I can get past these cars ahead of me. So that was my uh, entire thinking at this point in time. I'm like, okay, all these positions are there for my taking, and hence that is how, how I'm pushing for the context. Uh, yeah. the end of lap 26, 25. Yep, uh, the Aston uh, does have a off in the sand and uh, he this settles one of the McLarens, uh, but he doesn't lose position. But this allows us to put this attack into the other Ferrari. Uh, but we do gain the position of the Aston and uh, we are now into P20. So my target is P20 at the end of the race. And I'm pretty happy with that, but I still wanted these two positions. Uh, we decide to like, oh, gosh, yes. yeah, we, we have a air in P20. I do get one position after uh, one of the other Ferraris has crash. There's the Ferrari P16. And uh, right now, once again, uh, we decide to go for a move on the uh, Ferrari. This time, we are really close to him, we're slip streaming behind him. Uh, and I decided to take the outside ace. Yes. He always made it quite clear that he was going to defend the inside over there. But uh, once again, the mob is really pulling up. I go quite wide. Uh, marbles are literally a landmine on this track and of course I am now a bit wary of the Aston behind and decided to cover the inside make sure he doesn't get any ideas. Uh, at this point I am a bit worried about Aston because I don't know if he's on pace with the Ferrari ahead or maybe slightly better. So I am a bit cautious with the Aston is really good. Uh, the Aston is very stable on that particular breaking point. I have to be relatively more Con uh, conservative over there, but now once again, uh, coming back to the Ferrari ahead, uh, we do get past the next lap. But uh, on the upper section, especially the Ferrari is quite quick, and that meant and uh, we now had the Aston or had other cars to worry about as well behind it. Uh, as you can see, the Ferrari, the purple Ferrari, black and purple the Ferrari has also like, dropped off, so there's another position, and now so, uh, I have 
and you have two to three laps to go. Uh, three is optimistic, and I decide that it's time for me that I had to get past Ferrari because I can see now that he has less lift stream now compared to earlier, and that means that he is going to be more vulnerable in the straight. But uh, probably the best opportunity offered up is the penultimate lap when uh, coming through the top of the hill, going to the down section, he actually met a back marker of uh, A. Ibrahimian and I think this really unsettled him. Uh, he, he was quite scary, uh, I was a bit afraid of I wasn't sure how he was going to behave, but he acted very predictably and I think this really unsettled the other Ferrari. As you can see, he does get very slightly over that, uh, over the crest and this means that he did not get the ideal line through the, uh, through the hairpin base, through the hairpin. I forgot the, I have not put the corner and patterns. And this helps get a really, really good run. On him. And now, uh, easily getting the slipstream. We have the overspeed on him. We decide to go around the outside. Of course, now this time taking the inside and I go there. Uh, I break deep. Uh, I, he does try to uh, go around my outside, but I, 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 I tell him. We're not getting that position, and I think he loses a further position with Aston as well. There, so uh, really, a bit aggressive over there, but I think it's it's fair at the end of the day. And of course, uh, now continuing on, uh, I did I, I did uh, feel a bit optimistic that I could get the Ferrari ahead, but uh, I wasn't like uh, at this point my tires were also not in the optimal state, and I was really struggling with a bit of sliding. And honestly, that whole battle had uh, put me a bit out of touch with him, and. We do gain on him, maybe if you had one more lap, uh, I think the move would have definitely been on, but unfortunately we don't have an, uh, another lap in, and uh, at the end of the day, we cross the line, we finish P8. So, I, I feel a bit, I feel a bit that I should have won this race, I definitely had the pace for the win, but uh, unfortunately that is racing, and maybe for the next race, uh, we can come back strong.